Happy Friday, everybody. It's July 24th. I'm Paul Hookalak. This is TV7.ca News. Well, today we've got some Rock and August updates. Do you ride on our trails? Uh, the city and the RCMP also want to remind you of some rules you might not be aware of. And we have some information about the RCMP public complaint director. All that today and more, but first. As we've alluded to the last couple of weeks, Rock in August is just around the corner. Now this year, things will be a little bit different, however. Instead of the show and shine that takes over Lions Park and that part of the River Valley, they will be bringing the cars to your neighborhood. That's right, they'll be doing cruises throughout our city with the first of three cruises being the east side of St. Albert on August 4th, the west side on August 6th, and Saturday the 8th, they'll run through the Edmonton Garrison, Cardiff, Morinville, and the end of Legal. TV7.ca will be live streaming the cruise on August 6th. And in an attempt to bring the rockin' part back to rockin' August, we will have a local live band performing as well. Check out the rockin' August website for cruise routes and times. Now, in addition to the cruises, local restaurants, including Original Joe's, Crown and Tower, Jade Village, and IHOP, are all running Rock in August food and drink specials. And of course, they'll still be offering the drive-ins theater playing Ronin on Friday night and Gone in 60 Seconds on Saturday night. Very apt. Now the drive-in is only $25 per car load. The tickets are going fast and are expected to be gone in 60 seconds. There's so many other great activities happening at Rock in August this year as well. So check out their website to all the information. Last Thursday, on July 16th, at approximately 9.30 p.m., a male entered a commercial yard located in the Riel Industrial Park and proceeded to steal a pickup truck, a utility trailer, and a skid steer. The utility trailer and the skid steer were later found in Edmonton. Now, if you have any information about this crime, call St. Albert RCMP at 780-458-7700. Or, if you'd like to remain anonymous, contact Crime Stoppers online at p3tips.com or by using the P3Tips app. Well, despite the fact that they always do such an amazing job, maybe sometimes you might have a complaint about our local RCMP. Well, the Public Complaint Director, or the PCD, assists members of the public in understanding the complaint process. The PCD position operates independently from the RCMP and is performed by a volunteer who serves as a public member of the St. Albert Policing Committee. Complaints can be initiated by anyone to whom the conduct was directed or a guardian of such person or by anyone heard or by anyone who has heard or saw the incident. Now, in addition, if you've suffered loss, damage, distress, danger, or inconvenience, as a result of the RCMP, you're also encouraged to lodge a complaint. The public complaint director is active and can be reached by phone at 587-926-2519 or email at pcd at stalbert.ca. Please contact them if you have any questions about this process. And to learn more about the PCD and the complaint process at stalbert.ca, search public complaint director. And Crystal Lucier keeps an eye on our wallets with financial focus. I want money. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Today, we're going to chat a little bit about the small and medium enterprise relaunch grant that the Alberta government has put forward. The important thing to note about this grant is that applications do cease as of August 31st. So if you don't have your application in by then, you will not be reviewed for qualification. This grant is up to $5,000 in funding for COVID-19 impacted small to medium-sized businesses in Alberta. The intention of this money is to create uh, 
cost solutions for physical barriers that are required, any personal protective equipment, PPE that needs to be purchased for your store, any rent or employee wages that you're having a hard time covering to get started, or any replacement inventory because you've been away uh, due to COVID-19. You do need to prove that you've had a reduction of at least 50% as a result of COVID-19 to qualify for this grant, and they will uh, send you that money direct deposit so that you can get your physical barriers and PPE in place so that you can relaunch. The government has committed to paying $200 million in funding for this grant program that is coming directly from the government of Alberta. And there are eligibility requirements. So to be eligible, you need to have you need to have a legal entity, which means that you either need to be incorporated and have a certificate of incorporation, registered under the Partnerships Act, which means that you have a partnership certification um, certificate on file, or a sole proprietor with a trade name registered so that they know that you're a registered business. If you are a nonprofit or a society, and you can also prove a reduction in revenues, and you have not received any of the wage subsidy or the SIBA loan or the RRRF loan, then you can uh, qualify for this relaunch strategy $5,000. You also have to have less than 500 employees. If you've temporarily closed or had to tone down your operations through COVID-19, you are a qualified business. It is important to note that if you are receiving funds from any of the following, um, you will not qualify for the $5,000 grant because you're being subsidized in another way. So if you've received the SIBA loan, the RRRF loan, uh, CERB personally, or if you've received the wage subsidy for your business, you cannot qualify for this $5,000 grant. There are also uh, ineligible organizations. So if you are not registered in some form with the Alberta government, such as sole proprietors without registered trade names, or if you are uh, an Alberta direct mental health addiction center, um, or if you've received any funding grants from the women and homeless shelters, the community funding grant, uh, Canada Emergency Support Fund, then you do not qualify for this grant amount. You can apply online. Uh, you can just do a search for Alberta relaunch grant, or you can go to alberta.ca backslash SME hyphen relaunch hyphen grant dot ASPX. Um, just Google it, it will come up. It's very clearly on the Alberta website uh, with a blue banner at the top. And it again is called the small and medium enterprise relaunch grant, and it is a maximum of $5,000. So if you think that you may qualify or if you have questions about this, please, please look into it. Um, there have been a lot of grants and loans and assistance that have been a bit poo-pooed by some businesses because they think that they just won't qualify. It's important that you look into it to see if it can help your business. If you do qualify, um, take advantage of this so that you can get your business going again post-COVID-19 and make sure that we're supporting small businesses and small business is sustainable in Alberta, even during these times. If you do need help, my team is here for you. We're willing to answer questions. Just reach out. Again, I'm Crystal Lucier with Preferred Tax Solutions, and this is TV7.ca. I want money. Well, goodness, we love the summer. It's a great time to be outside enjoying the city's nearly 100 kilometers of trail system. And now perhaps you've been enjoying the trail system. You've noticed the RCMP patrolling them on one of their carts. Now one concern the public has brought to the attention of St. Albert RCMP while performing cart patrols is that some cyclists are not using their bike bell while riding on the trails. You're being reminded that as a cyclist, you should stay in the right of the path and ring your bell when approaching or passing other people on the pathways. Also, when entering a blind corner, use your bell once again to alert anyone who may be on the other side. Also, don't forget to practice the COVID-19 social distancing requirements when on the trails. Bells or horns and helmets are required when riding bikes within our city, and fines of up to $100 happen for violations. And cyclists are permitted to ride their bikes on the sidewalks, but must yield to pedestrians. 
When riding on our city's paths and sidewalks, you're responsible to operate your bike in a controlled manner. Cyclists who choose to ride their bike on the roadways must follow the rules of the road. Cyclists have the same rights and responsibilities as a driver of a motor vehicle and must obey the same rules when traveling on the road. Cyclists must yield to pedestrians, stop for stop signs, red lights, etc., and travel with the flow of traffic. Now, if you're riding a bicycle, you are considered by law a vehicle on the road. So if you're getting out this summer, enjoying the beautiful outdoor spaces our city has to offer, and there are many of them, remember to stay safe and be a good neighbor. And as you've already noticed, which I failed to mention at the beginning of the broadcast, Lisa is away this week. She will be here next week. That's all this week. If you have any community events or news you'd like to share with our viewers, please send us an email at news at tv7.ca. And from all of us at tv7.ca, I'm Paul Hooklack. Please, guys, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Uh, have an amazing summer. Have a great week. See you next week.